Hey you guys, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Christy Bush and I've spent the last 10 years working very closely with students, with uh, school systems, with professionals, with parents, uh, in sort of in the arena of online safety and how we can keep our kids safe when they are using social media apps, devices, gaming, this type of thing, making sure that they're not making missteps and making sure they are protected from others online. And the conversation that I want to have with you today is one that I have not had in and have not had to have for the last 10 years, but we need to have it today. The things that are happening, I think it warrants a really hard, tough conversation, but I also want to be able to provide you with some tools that you can have in your home to have conversations with your kids about what we're gonna talk about, and that is school shootings. And what I mean by that is the hoax threats that are happening or kids that are posting online as a joke that there's going to be a school shooting. This has been rampant for the last two weeks. Post the tragedy that happened in Georgia, it sort of ramped up with kids making threats that are not real. They're getting online and they, the ones that have been arrested and that have been caught have said that it was as a joke. You and I as parents know this is not a joke. As adults, we understand the seriousness behind this, but we need to be able to address this issue, this issue to hopefully get this to calm down. Just this morning, seeing in my area, yet again, another discussion of um, some of the threats that were made. Are they real? They've had to send dogs into the school. So I wanna to talk to you about a couple of things why this is so important, why this is so scary, what you can talk to your kids about, um, and then some other things that you can do as parents. One is the massive allocation of resources that is needed to go to a school system for a school shooter involves so much of the community and so much of the, of the surrounding communities. For obvious reasons, we want to make sure that our kids are protected. So if there is an active shooter on scene, then we want to have all of these resources available to us. But what it does, it pulls resources from other communities. I think we had a school last week from some of the information that I was looking at, somewhere between 90 to 100 police officers on scene at a school where there wasn't actually a shooter. It was some rumors that had gotten started. So there wasn't a shooter, but we had a massive response. Number one, fantastic. This is what we want to happen, again, if there's an actual school shooter in place. But when there isn't, we want our kids, when we're having conversations with them about why they should not be doing this, explain to them what this does with community resources. It pulls our officers from other communities where they could be helping someone that is in a car wreck or helping other, other people that need help in that community instead of going to a school that has a hoax threat associated with it. Um, some of the other really, really big issues, this is traumatizing. So number one for the students and then number two for the parents. I mean, vice versa, whatever. Like it's traumatizing for everyone involved and then also for the teachers as well, the staff that's at the school. No parent ever wants to pick up their phone and have a text message, mom, I love you. There's a school shooter, we're in lockdown. Nobody wants to read that. It is utterly terrifying to get that text message or to get that phone call. The kids that are actually in school that are having to respond to lockdown and go through the entire drill because there's been a threat, threat, made, threat made is also absolutely terrifying. It is traumatizing. Um, and I, what I like to call in coaching a big T, like a big trauma, for some people that are involved in this for various reasons. So it is not something to be taken lightly. You also have, have all of the staff that involved that have to go through the entire lockdown scenario, which again is very traumatizing. They are responsible for these kids. So it is a weight that they immediately feel, what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? Having to go through the entire process. When you have kids that are making threats and it's not real, and you're walking through this process, it is unnecessary trauma that staff and students and parents are facing, okay? Discuss that with your children today, right now, full stop, sit down tonight, tonight. I don't care what school system you're in, I don't care where you are, sit down with your kids tonight and have the conversation around how traumatizing it can be to have your school go, in, go down into lockdown, especially if some kids are making a joke about it. Again, if there's an actual shooter on scene, we want all of these things to happen. They have to happen to protect others, but not if this is quote unquote a joke as a lot of kids are um, 
saying is what they're doing when they get caught, which brings me to, I have yet to see the research that I'm doing, the kids that are getting caught. And let me tell you guys, all across the US, what I'm seeing is law enforcement are doing due diligence and finding out who is making these threats. They are digging hard, they are asking questions, and they are figuring out who's doing these threats, and they are arresting them. So whatever charges that can be pressed against uh, are that are pressed because of what your child did, um, any of the comments they made, any sort of I guess involvement that they have with it is going to be county to county, state to state, school to school, whatever's going on in your community. I know school, some schools are actually expelling kids because of this. So my suggestion to you is discuss this with your kids. Discuss with them even if they say, oh, I was just joking, I wouldn't really do that, you know, whatever. They will still, they will still 100% be arrested and the charges that are brought against them, again, will be community to community, however they decide to navigate that, however the school decides to navigate that, but help them to understand they are not gonna get off free by doing this. No one is gonna laugh, no one's gonna say that it was okay. You are absolutely going to get in trouble, and the issues that you're going to face from this one quote unquote joke that you made online may follow you for the rest of your life. If you get expelled, that's an issue that you've gotta face for the rest of your school year. When you get ready to go to college, all of these things build up, right? Talk to your kids about the, con the very severe consequences. Pull it up in your community. Sit down with them. Show them in black and white. Even better, have your kids kind of do a quick Google search of their own. Hey, what happens if someone jokingly decides to say, hey, there's going to be a shooter at school tomorrow or makes threats? that they're going to do it as a joke. Pull up the consequences for your area. If you can't find them for your area, then use it as, as a generalization for what they're, they're doing across the US. I don't care, explain to your kids there's gonna be consequences somewhere, period. Number three, pick up your kid's phone today, tonight. Pick up your kid's phone and take a look at the information that they are exchanging with their friends. So look at their text messages, look at their pictures, look at all of their apps, look at their history on their phones, look at the content that, and the contacts that they are having, the influencers that they are following. This is a time that we can do a deep dive. And if you have not been doing this with your kids, you're gonna get some pushback. They're gonna be pretty ticked off. That's okay, they can be angry. Because at this point, we are looking at saving lives and we are looking at saving kids, your kid possibly, or another kid from having charges brought against them because they just decided to make a stupid comment, right? They decided to make a joking comment underneath one of these threads about school shooting or maybe it's a group chat or maybe they're snapping back and forth, whatever it is. I highly recommend that you sit down tonight and you pick up your child's phone and you take a look at their phone and you take a look at what they've been doing. Explain to your kid, if you have not been doing this, look, this is something that I may not necessarily really wanna have a conversation around with you, but I have to. As an adult and as your parent, it is my job to make sure that you are safe. And so sometimes we have to put adult eyes on content to make sure that kids are protected that have access to this adult space. So today, we're gonna to put adult eyeballs on the things that you're doing. Doesn't mean you're gonna get into trouble. If your kid though, side note, continues to push back against you on this and gets really, really angry that you're quote unquote picking up their phone, by the way, it's your phone, but they get mad that you're picking up their phone and you're invading their privacy, that means they're probably doing something they shouldn't be doing in the first place and we need to take a look right? We need to go ahead and have a look. It doesn't have to be a confrontation. We're not looking for all the things they're doing as teenagers and, you know, the things they're listening to and maybe they're cussing with their, we're not looking for that right now. What we're looking for is content around making jokes in this area, okay? Number four, I think is where I'm at. You guys, I feel a certain way about this. I, I've been two weeks of looking at it and I know that Parents that have gone through this and the law enforcement have gone through this are at their wit's end with it. It is awful. Um, have open conversations with your kids tonight. Tonight. Sit down and discuss with them the importance, like I was just talking about, not 
making a joke. Don't make a joke on the bus. Don't make a joke standing in line with your friends. Don't make a comment under a comment. If you just make a comment that's five comments or a hundred comments down, do not snap someone. Do not snap someone as a joke that you're going to shoot the school up tomorrow or that you think it's funny that so-and-so was talked about doing it or if someone says it and then you follow it up with your own snap. Do not do that. Why? That crap does not disappear. Somebody's going to take a screenshot of it. Someone's going to share it and it is going to get back and the school could possibly go on lockdown and you are going, you meaning the child, are going to be a part of that process. They will find you. Explain this to your, your child. 100% they will find you. They know there's really smart IT guys down at the PD and they're gonna pull all that information up. They can figure out what you're doing on Snapchat. By the way, I can figure out what you're doing on Snapchat. It does not disappear. Here's the other side of it. All of that content, these jokes, quote unquote jokes that your kids are making, tell them this, all of that becomes evidence. So if they wanna say, no, 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 I didn't say that, and then they are presented with the evidence, here's the comments that you did make. We have it right here. Here's a screenshot of something that you said. That evidence can then roll over and be used in court against them. Have a very, and you don't have to be as worked up as I am, I don't recommend that. But I need you guys to dig in as parents and have conversations with your kids tonight. Is this gonna stop things 100%? No. Could your kid look at you and go, I would never, and then do it? Yes. We know that because of what happened in Georgia. But what we need to do on our side of it as parents is to do our due diligence and make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do. So if we're going to give them devices and if we are going to give them social media that was meant for adults, if we're going to give them an adult platform where they can act, where they can make really bad decisions that are going to have adult consequences, it is time for us to have very adult conversations with our kids. If you need help around this, if you need help in the space of how do I start the conversation, what do I look for, where do I look, message me, email me, kmbcommunications at yahoo.com. I will walk you through it and help you be able to have that hard conversation with your kid. Just have the conversation.